testing.
welcome. It is good to see everyone here as we continue to celebrate that summer has arrived, uh, which often means some rain at some point during the week, but today is supposed to be an absolutely wonderful day. And we give thanks that we are able though, to connect with so many others through Facebook Live. And so welcome as we join in worship together here. Um, and then in terms of announcements, you will notice on the one side, it has a very small announcement at the top there that says Help Wanted. And then it has a big thing on Vacation Bible School. Um, the Help Wanted is very important. Um, Jimmy is still coming in on Mondays to keep us sane and taking care of most of the bulletin and that kind of stuff, but um, she's ready for us to find a full-time, uh, full -time, a 28-hour-a-week replacement for her. And, you know, summer's a little quieter, so Val is saying it's okay, but we need to get somebody in. Um, the title is receptionist, but it's more than being just a receptionist. It is that tech person that actually takes care of the screens and the narthex and emails and putting together bulletins and that. So um, good office skills in the modern technology days. Um, Vacation Bible School is coming up fast in August. And the 18th is when we need registrations in. But I would remind you we have a limited number of staff that are available. And therefore, we have a limited uh, number of kids. So keeping those adults are people, volunteers, and staff at the proper ratios is always critical. So make sure you get them in. And we also need registrations for the preschoolers as well. Um, so those are the two big on that side. But on the other there's lots of other things. Today is a very busy day. We start out with, um, today is the end of bringing in supplies for the Women's World Advocacy Program, the RAP program, which also does take care of men. Um, so the supply list, if you didn't, if you forgot to bring it today, you can call Laura Monsterman. Um, I'm not sure exactly what she plans on delivering those, but uh, that will be that activity. And then immediately after church is another big event here. Um, we have technical people that sit up in the balcony on Sunday mornings and take care of details behind the scenes. And that's the sound person, the screen person, and the Facebook Live person. Um, and we'd like to get a few more people involved in that. So if you have any interest, or if you're just curious, after church, go up there and they will tell you a little bit about what goes on in those, um, those three seats up there. Um, and you can think about whether or not you want to talk more with the worship and music people on being part of those teams. Um, and then later on today is um, the sad news that on Wednesday we lost Janet McCullough, um, Jody Goldman's mother, um, Cotton's wife. Um, Janet and Cotton have been at the Ridge for some time and have been coming regularly to there. Uh, so we know Janet well, but her home church is in Dazzle, um, Gethsemane in Dazzle, and that's where she would like to have her funeral. So her funeral will be tomorrow at 11 in Dazzle, but there is a visitation from 2 to 4 at Wing Bay here in town for all of you to be able to go and express your condolences to Cotton and to um, Jody and to her brother Jeff. So we keep all of that family in our prayers as they take care of that. Um, and then we have another presentation. Ryan Martin has been at Bible Camp this past week, and he came up to me and said, I'd like to tell people about it. So Ryan. Thank you for sending me to camp this year. I had a 
at one time learning about my relationship with God and learning more about other people and their relationships. I went to fishing camp this year and I caught a 19 inch bass. It was this big. <laughs> if you want to hear more, come ask me what I am made of. Thank you. I know it's still June here today, but tomorrow will start July, and that means committee meetings. Um, so Monday night, instead of Wednesday, we're through the music group our meeting. Tuesday is Outreach Executive Committee and Property Committee. Um, and then Wednesday, Val and Jenny will both be gone, and I will be down at Yellow Medicine, um, so we probably will not have anyone here. Um, and then, of course, the office will be closed for Independence Day and closed on Friday as usual. Um, so the men will be gathering over for their Bible study on Saturday. And then you have the reminder that the quilt auction will be on July 27th, which is way out there. Um, but we also have the reminder that the Endowment Committee is going to be meeting on the 9th and they're looking for applications for grants. Um, so the permission and property and grounds. So any, any grant requests that need to be turned in need to be gotten into them. Um, and next week's noisy offering will be for the Living at Home Block Nursing Program. I think that's all of my announcements. Is that all of the announcements? All right. Then, please, stand as you are able. Not a technical person. God of all mercy and consolation, come to help of your people. Turn us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our, our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not followed you with our whole heart. We have not followed our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us join in singing hymn number 712.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the commission of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. that though he was rich, 
Yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you, who began last year not to do something, but even to enjoy, desire to do something, now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable, according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, there is one who had much, did not have too much, and the one who had little, did not have too little. Here it's a lesson. Wrote to read Psalm 30 respons responsibly. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up, and did not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, I have, I cry to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol, restored to me to life from among those gone down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord, O you who is in one and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, as for my heart, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O Lord, you have established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face, I was dismayed. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be gracious to me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. So that my soul may praise you and have my silence. Here is the lessons. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. Said, 
who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, Do you see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say you touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talith Kamu, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this, they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Pray to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. And I'm looking for children to come up because this baby has a servant for them. Okay, any of you are children of God? Is anybody want to come up? I think I think you have forgotten to turn your mic back on again. It's doing it itself. Is it got great on? Yeah. Okay, come on. We've got the kids. Who's willing to be a child? I think okay. it'll be just the two of us, I guess. <laughs> okay, do you know what this says? W-W-J-D. How many of you know what that means? Wishing, wishing, judge, done. No, you're wrong. What would Jesus do? Oh. And I think, uh, we, we do have someone joining us. Ryan, thank you. <laughs> Come and sit down with you. <coughs> How do we learn what's right and wrong? The Bible? Going to church? Do your parents teach you right and wrong? Do we always do good? No. I know I didn't. Um, I still don't. No. You pray about that. I will. <laughs> Can you think of any situations you've been in where you didn't know what to do? Your parents weren't there. Um, you weren't in church. And something came up and it was kind of like, what am I going to do about this? Can you think of something like that? When I was, I think of being bullied. As an adult, I knew what I would say. When I was your age, I didn't really know what to handle that. But as I have gone through life, what would Jesus do pops into my head? Always. Like, what am I going to do? And, you know, when you pray to God, you don't have to use fancy words or anything. It's like we're having a conversation with them. So it's like, you know, what, what would Jesus do? Um, when I think of role models, who are yours? Jesus and God? And your parents? I met your grandma the other weekend. Very nice grandma. Um, I think of Jesus being one of our role models and how you know, being kind and thoughtful, caring, all our good things in a role model. But do we always do good? No. 
if we're in a situation and we're getting kind of angry about something, and then it's like, okay, what should I do about this? Sometimes we're appropriate, sometimes we're not. But we always know that we can pray to God. The other part that I'm thinking is, let's see if I have one. I'm thinking of like when we meet somebody on the street, say uh, Courtney was walking down the street and you met her, would you walk with your head down or would you say, hi Courtney, how are you? And to me that's one of the positive things we can do to people. Um, a smile. It's kind of all of those things that we want to be. And surprising that they are smiling to somebody is the only positive thing that comes out. So to me, it's always nice to be kind, be helpful, be compassionate. And I think of two things that my husband said when I first met him was, God, I thank you. And what was the other one? God is good and thank you, Jesus. And it's like those things are so easy to say and do that it's just one more thing along with what we do. Let's pray. And you can all pray with us because you're children of God. Dear God, thank you for letting us be with you today. Thank you for letting us be with you today. Thank you for Brian coming up. I was a little afraid no one was coming. <laughs> and thank you for he and his family because they are role models in their own. Uh, give us some sunshine for a couple days and just be with us. We know that you're around with us all the time when we're in trouble. I want to look up and say, what would Jesus do about this? In your name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you for being a child. <laughs> As you said, we're all children of God. We're all these children. And it is one of those things. And so we have this gospel where we have two people in need of healing. And Jesus is that source. But it also is that question, what would Jesus do? How did Jesus treat these two different people? And it's so interesting that these two healings are intertwined. You have both this influential person in Jairus. And you know, somebody you know, somebody who's important, you kind of expect Jesus to help them, or whoever that's being influenced should, you know, should help them. They should take care of them. Now, for most of us, we would expect that. But then there's this woman. And we never get a name for her. She's been financially destroyed by an illness that has not gone away. And you know, why should Jesus bother with her? Why should he take time for her? And she even has the attitude, she knows how important he is. And so her as a if I just touch his clothes. And she has the confidence of her faith in the power that Jesus has that will result in her healing. Just that simple touch. So I wonder how many of you have experienced a surge of power from someone as they put their hands on you when you needed some consoling or some healing. Or have you experienced the healing that happens because of prayer, especially when it's done by others, that they have healing because others were praying for them. The miracles of God's touch through others continues to amaze us. 
and now. But the person that does it also feels that power going out from them. And Jesus feels that healing power go from him to this unnamed woman. And Jesus stops. He acknowledges that experience. And I have to think that Jesus had to be able to identify the woman. But he chooses to let her come forward. She is worthy of his time. She is worthy of being acknowledged. And he is not going to force her. He's not going to stand her out. He's going to let her come forward to him. And welcomes her. He gives her a status of being daughter. And he reminds us that everyone is important. He takes time to acknowledge this no-name woman. Her need is worthy of delaying going to the home of the important person. And let us not forget the risk this woman has taken to come out. She has violated the cultural rules by going out in public knowing she is bleeding. She approaches a man and touches him. Again, culturally very inappropriate. But she is at the point of total desperation. She's destitute and her sickness is getting worse. Nothing the physicians have done has healed her. And not only does she need the physical healing, she also needs the financial healing. She needs to be able to be made whole. But that leads us to the Corinthians text and Paul's statements to the Corinthians, asking them to give assistance to the people in Jerusalem. And he gives them the reminder, quote, though he was rich, Christ became poor so that we might become rich, unquote. Christ made so many sacrifices for us and Paul reminds us that we too are rich as he reminded the Corinthians. And his desire is for all to recognize our own riches so that we are empowered to share with those who are in need. Generosity is the natural result of realizing how blessed and healed we are. It is in that sharing that we experience our own healing. And we see those who are struggling, especially because of illness, are able to be secure, freed from the sickness of financial insecurity. And it is not to, quote, relieve others while we are hard pressed, unquote. But it is to be open to the opportunities to share, both in giving and in receiving, whether it is the healing power from Christ or the financial assistance. And it is part of that healing that the woman receives because Christ was willing to become poor for us. And yet his power is not limited to those who are unnamed. He does continue on with Jairus and assures him that his daughter would be fine. Even when people are telling Jairus she has died. And then did you notice that Jesus then rejects the crowd that are following and only takes a small group to be with the girl. He wants the parents and a few of his followers with him as they lay hands on and heal her. And when the girl is up and walking around, Jesus did not do it for recognition. He did not do it for acceptance. He did not do it to claim authority. And so he says, don't tell anybody. Jesus uses his power to heal and continues on with teaching how the kingdom of God has come near. Jesus gives generously, 
opening up opportunities for people of all sorts. And he keeps reminding us to be open to connect to everyone because all are worthy of Jesus' time. And so we share our time, our talents, and our treasures, remembering how generous Jesus was and is to us. Amen. Let us join in singing our hymn of the day, Great is Thy Faithfulness, 733. as you are able. Please join with me for the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was, was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered, suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. 
Amen. Amen. The prayers of the church. God of abundance, you fill your church with a multitude of gifts. Inspire all this congregation to accept the challenges of being leaders, to support and guide the ministries you have called us to do. Care for the call committee and send to them a settled pastor to work with this congregation in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of creation, your goodness abounds. Multiply the fruits of the earth and guide us as we are, we are good stewards, wisely using it and not wasting any of the fruits you have given, given us. Especially guide us in renewing lands that are currently flooded in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of justice, you reign in steadfast love. Bring peace between nations ravaged by war or strife and illumine paths to the justice and freedom for those who lead them. In your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of compassion, your touch brings healing and your word revives us for life. Here are prayers for Mary, Scott, Tim, Yvonne, Nancy, Di, Butch, Betty, Marlene, Terry, Rochelle, Harlan, David, and the family of Janet McCullough, and any of those who we name in our heart, and all who are in need and for doctors, nurses, health care workers who provide care. Turn wailing into dancing, weeping into joy, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of community, you gather us at your table of plenty, where there is hunger among us. Open our hands. Where we are indifferent to the needs of others, open our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all ages, great is your faithfulness. We remember with thanksgiving our beloved dead who with all the saints sing without ceasing in your realm of glory. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arms we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share that peace one with another. Okay, you're going to go, go down. Get the offering plate. Chapter 8 of Corinthians is one of those wonderful texts when you think about stewardship because it has, please be seated as we take up the offering here, um, we want to remember that generosity is just a natural fruit of being a part, and Corinthians 8 is a wonderful text to read on a regular basis to remind us that God blesses us and God calls us to be generous and to share so that Christ can be proclaimed throughout the world and so that we can do ministries here. Let us share through our offerings and for those of you online, um, go to the website, do the online giving. May we truly be generous in all that we do.
do that one. Go ahead. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able and let us join in singing the canticle of thanksgiving. Salvation. Let us pray. O oh God of justice and love, we give you thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end, bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Let us join in singing, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, verses 1 through 4, 886. 